Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I know it has been quite a long conference. A lot of knowledge has been put into your heads during the last two days. Uh, but I just ask you, like, keep your eyes open for the next 30, 35 minutes, because I think we have something really cool to show you, OK? Uh, well, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, what Zalando is, where we work, uh, who we are. Then I'm going to jump. Uh, Leo is going to jump there and God is going to explain to you a bit uh, what the idea is, uh, where it came from, and how we developed the, the process of uh, creating this uh, open source tool. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, afterwards, I will explain what Selenium is, why we did it, and I have a nice graphic that shows you how it works conceptually. Then I will jump to the demo. And we will just round it up with some final numbers and some questions, OK? Salando um, is not so known here in the US, but it's very well known in Europe. It's the European fashion platform. Many people use it to buy clothes, but it's more than that. People get recommendations on what to combine, how to combine clothes. And we build almost everything around it, the website, all the infrastructure needed for delivery, logistics, et cetera, et cetera. We are more than 1,600 people working in tech. And in the company in total, we are more than 10,000. Um, we have six tech hubs, or six offices, uh, three in Berlin. We have one in Dortmund, one in Helsinki, and one in Dublin. Um, we are very well known. We have a big open source repository. Feel free to browse, to browse it, and maybe you will find something else interesting. It's a very diverse company. There are 77 nations, maybe perhaps not more. And as I said, we develop everything from mobile, back end, front end, et cetera, et cetera. And to allow people to work in a simple way to test their applications, there is an area in Salando called engineering productivity. And we work there. We work as software engineers in test. And we spend all our day trying to figure out ways to create tools or to buy tools that can help people to simplify their testing process. And um, the idea of this area is that we are constantly innovating what we can use inside Salando. Uh, so I'm Diego. Um, I have been working in Salando a bit more than one year, and Leo has been a bit longer, and we have been working together in this tool. And around six to eight months, we started thinking about what to do on top of this. So Leo is going to show you and tell you a bit what the idea was. OK. Thank you, Diego, for this great introduction. Um, basically, most of you have used Docker Selenium. That's pretty cool. And I guess the reason for that, or one of the reasons, is because you wanted headless testing but on a real browser. And Docker Selenium allows you to pull the image, right? And you can get Chrome, Firefox, and Selenium, all of it in a docking container. And you can do the same um, on any machine. But at some point, uh, we realized this wasn't enough because Chrome and Firefox is just two browsers. And we wanted to test in multiple ones, right? So cloud um, solutions exist for this. But we still wanted to keep using Docker Selenium because, well, <laughs> um, I started the project. And I'm, I've seen many of the maintainers here. It was really cool to see you. Um, so to keep Docker Selenium and to send the test into the cloud, we needed to put some logic somewhere, right? And I Googled for this to see if someone had already done it, because in this place, we were going to manage the containers. Every time you, you request a, a Chrome or Firefox node, the idea was that uh, this service would spin up a new Docker Selenium container, and when the test is over, it would destroy it. So this, this, this didn't exist. And I just thought the idea, but I thought, no, I'm, I'm never going to have time to do this. Until Diego came in, and he came with a lot of energy. And that was pretty cool, actually. 
And so we've been developing this tool. You're going to see in the demo more clearly what it's about. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. The, he, I, I wanted him to introduce the idea because he had it in his mind at the beginning. But he's not feeling so well, that's why he's doing only one, one slide. But I'm sure you'll feel better in the, in the beer crafting event. No? <laughs> so that was the main idea. And as a small parenthesis, I just want to ask you, who has used here Selenium Grid? Almost everyone, right? But who has tried to build a Selenium Grid? Almost everyone. And I think the next question will be, hopefully, <laughs> what I expect. So do you think it's easy to build one and to maintain it? Mostly not, no? You need to be aware of all the, is it, uh, do you need to all the OK. You need to be aware of the, of the versions. You need to keep them updated. You need to spend some time and, and some effort to keep everything in, sign, in sync to make sure that the test is, if it fails, that it doesn't fail because the infrastructure is not, it's not flaky. So going back to Selenium, um, Selenium, what is Selenium? Selenium is a Selenium grid that is dynamic. It contracts and grows on runtime. This means that when you're running a test on the background, there is a Docker Selenium container created for you the test is run, is executed over there, and when the test is completed, the, the node is disposed. Uh, this continues the idea that Docker has. Docker, the Docker promise is that you will have always an immutable infrastructure. That every time you spin a new, spin a new container, it will be as new and it will work from scratch. As I said, as we said, it's based on Docker Selenium, so it's completely open source. And it's very simple to start, to set up, to run, and to stop it as well. And it has many more features that you will be able to see it during the demo. Um, but more than that, uh, we implemented Selenium because, as we already know, it's hard to maintain a Selenium grid. And also, it's difficult to cover all the capabilities you have. You could cover with Docker, Selenium, Chrome, and Firefox. But if you need to test in different browsers, you could find yourself in trouble because of the maintenance that is required. And um, this creates Selenium's main goal, that anyone should be allowed to have a disposable and flexible grid, that you could just start it before your tests, execute your tests, and then you can throw it away, just like that. We also think that. Uh, when you're running your tests, you should use the appropriate tool for your environment. So the idea of Selenium is not to replace a cloud testing provider, it's not to replace source labs or browser stack, the idea is to complement them. Because most of the time, maybe you can run your tests locally, and when you want to do your release, you can use all the benefits from these uh, good providers. In addition to that, we took the time to analyze the tests we were running inside Salando using Source Labs. We took a sample and we found that around 82% of the tests we were running were using Google Chrome or Firefox. Then we saw this is a great opportunity to continue creating this tool, to offer it to our teams and get a better management of the tools that we have over there, like Source Labs, for example. This is the slide I was telling you about where I explain conceptually how Selenium works. At the beginning, when you spin the tool, when you spin Selenium, a dog, um, Selenium grid hub starts, right? After that, a Docker Selenium, a smart Docker Selenium starts, which is able to handle the incoming requests and create nodes on demand. And next to it, a cloud Proxy, we call it like that. It could be browser stack or source labs or testing bot, which is another cloud testing provider. And when all of the three uh, components get up, they connect each other and they are online, ready for you. And this brings us to the first scenario. Imagine someone that has a test. He wrote a test, he or she wrote a test, and needs to run this test in 
Firefox or Chrome. Then the test request is sent to the hub. The hub receives it and it starts asking around, hey, Docker Selenium node, can you run this test? And Docker Selenium analyzes the test and says, yeah, I can do it. Just let me spin a, a, a new container for you. So in the background, a new container gets created. This container registers itself to the hub. The hub identifies that and then assigns this new test to this container. Then the test is executed over there. It completes, failing or passing, it doesn't matter. And when it's completed, the node just shuts down. Before doing that, the node will uh, take a video recording and the file will be saved locally. And now we have the second scenario where someone wants to execute maybe a different test or the same test, but in a capability that Docker Selenium cannot supply, right? So, for example, Internet Explorer or Safari, then this test arrives to the hub. The hub starts asking again around to all the nodes. Can you execute this test? Docker Selenium will say, no, I don't have those capabilities. Then it goes next to the cloud proxy, it will ask, and, the, and this proxy will say, yes, I have those capabilities and many more. So give it to me and I will execute it. Then this node will just route this test to the cloud provider you have configured and it will run uh, in SOSAT, for example. It will be executed over there, it will be completed. And when the test is completed, we use the API from this provider, let's say SOS Labs, and we get the URL where the video was saved, we download it for you, and you have it everything locally. Okay? How do you start this tool, Selenium? You need to have Docker installed, that is given. You need to pull two images, Docker Selenium and Selenium. After doing that, you execute this Docker command where simply you expose two ports, the Selenium grid port, 4444, and you expose another port, which is 5555, and this port allows you to see inside the containers what's happening. I will show you in the demo in a moment. You also share the, the Docker socket of your local daemon, and this allows Selenium to create more containers. At the end, you also share a local folder where you will get all the videos afterwards. Um, but you know, like this is a lot, no? Like to remember and to type and everything. So we just created something much more simple. A one line execution script that you just can fetch from our repository. You send it to bash, you start the tool, you run your tests, and then you stop it. That's it. You don't need to do anymore. This takes maybe 15 to 20 seconds and you have a Selenium grid ready for you. But what if you want to use something like Sauce Labs? So, same thing, similar as before. You export your source apps user, you export your API key, and then you pass them as environment variables to the Docker run. But this is too much, no? So we can use simply our one line script. You export the variables, the script identifies this and starts the, the tool, starts Selenium with source apps integrated. Now I will show you uh, a set of demos that we have recorded for you, um, and I will tell you step by step what is happening there. In this first one, we are starting Selenium in the normal way. It's very explicit, very verbose. It's showing how the nodes are getting started and it takes, I don't know, less than 15 seconds. And then over there, you have here this Docker Selenium proxy, which is uh, the smart one that identifies when a new test is coming and creates more nodes on the fly. The default thing is that Selenium will always start with one Chrome and one Firefox, and that's it. This took, I don't know, less than 20 seconds. And to stop it, you just do Control-C, you interrupt the process, and that's it. Now I will show the longer 
demonstration. We're doing the same thing here. We start Selenium, but with a one-line script, and we are starting it with source labs integrated. It takes a bit longer because it's setting up the connection between the local machine and source labs. But all the things I'm doing here, you can do it everywhere where you have Docker installed. In Jenkins, in Travis, any CI you have, and well, any, any place where you have Docker installed. And you can see here that, in this case, source labs will be enabled because you exported the variable. And now, you check the normal uh, grid console where you can see the basic Docker Selenium node, the other two, the Chrome and the Firefox, and here we have source labs with all the capabilities that are present. Afterwards, we can see this live preview which is a resource we created, and you can use it to see exactly what is inside. We also have a dashboard, and you will see how it works in a moment. Now what I'm doing, I'm just gonna execute some tests. Uh, it's a basic test using our website with a user flow, searching for something on the website, putting it in the basket, and then we will see how it looks in the tool. So right now we see that this node is getting used. And when we go to the live preview, you will see inside that the test is being executed. You can also see there that you can see the test name. If you add in your test capabilities, the name of the test, it will be shown there. So in case you're running many tests in parallel, you can identify which test belongs to that, to that um, container. You can also zoom in it go full screen, see how it works, and um, there is also an option where you can interact with the browser. I just opened here the read-only version, but you can also interact with it. You can like jump into, click on it, and uh, alter the, the behavior of the test. So right now it's running, and here, as you see, I'm using here the port 5555, and this is the one that enables us to show all the VNC um, viewports that we have inside the containers. And that was the test, that was it. And now I'm switching to the dashboard, I think. And I'm closing the container, and then you will see afterwards how the container that was used to run the test will vanish completely. So what is happening right now in this moment? When the container is being shut down, the video file is being taken, moved from the, from the Docker container, from the Docker Selenium container, and being copied to the like mother container, which is Selenium. And what happens afterwards, uh, after copying this video, this dashboard will identify that there is a new video, and it will show it like this. It's a very simple dashboard where you can click and see the video of the test to just execute it. And we put some simple information on the top. We put the test name, if you pass it, that capability in your test. We put also the browser that you use it, the exact version that was used during the test execution, the platform, which in this case with Docker Selenium is always Linux. And we put the name of the proxy that was used, which is Selenium, and also the the date of execution. Um, the test I'm executing right now, I'm doing it with two, with two capabilities. One was Chrome in Linux, and the other one was Chrome in, in Mac. So in this moment, the test was also being executed in, in Source Labs, and you will see in a moment how the dashboard gets refreshed, and you will see also the test that comes from Source Labs. So it's the same thing, it's the video downloaded from Source Labs, and you see there the same four pieces of information that are relevant for you. The name of the test, the browser that was used, the platform, I'm sorry, it was Windows, and the name of the proxy. And at the end, you see the date of the execution. I think... Okay, and now to show the next feature, which is the creation of containers on demand. I'm starting a set of tests that are very simple. 
they go and to different URLs and they just assert the title. And the purpose of this is that more containers will be created on the fly. And this means that you can just start like tests with, I don't know, four threads at the same time, five threads at the same time, and in the background this will be handled for you and more containers are created. So you see, when I start refreshing all the, um, all the resources, you will see more containers being created. And for you it's transparent. You were just starting your tests and you don't care what's happening there. And we did this in this way because uh, inside Zalando we are around 120 teams. So when a developer wants to run their tests, they want to use something that is simple. And if it's not simple, they will just like throw it away. So we need to make these tools that we promote internally very, very easy to use. Otherwise, nobody will use it. And since this tool doesn't have anything hard-coded inside related to our company, we just open source it as well. So as you see, like all the tests are running at the same time. You can see them there. And when you start refreshing the browser, you will see how new containers pop up, how the old containers are thrown away, and etc. Just let me forward a bit. Exactly, and that was the next point I wanted to show. So as soon as the videos are being created and being copied to the Selenium container, you will see more videos popping up in the dashboard. And this is all transparent for you. I will forward a bit. Okay, good. So, Anyway, the test, this demo is basically doing that, showing you how containers have been created on and on with you uh, just focusing on your testing. Let's forward it a bit. So at the end, what happens is that the test is completed and all the containers were used. You have all the videos there ready for you. And now I will go back and I will stop Selenium, which is very simple. Same command and stop. It takes a while because it's also removing all the leftovers, all the things that were like the temp files and so on. And the next thing is that since the container is down, all these resources are down. And then what happens with the dashboard? Like you would like to still see it, right? So this is a static HTML file with some JavaScript on the back. You can open it also without Selenium running, and you still see it in the same way as if it was running. And this means that when you are running uh, your tests in Jenkins or any other tool you are using for your continuous integration, you can do at the end some archiving of the, of the, of the artifacts, and you can see this as, a, as like your test report, for example. Um, the next thing, what was the... Yeah, this is the last part I wanted to show. And in, in essence, what happens here is that this is your local, your local folder that you mapped at the beginning when you started Selenium. And you will see there all the videos that were downloaded. And we made them in a, in a very verbose way so you could clearly identify which test was executed where. In this case, you could see that the file names are called Selenium, name of the test, the browser, platform, and a timestamp. Uh, on, on the same pattern, if you check, source labs, name of the test, et cetera, et cetera. So for you, it's really, really clear to know, okay, this video, what is inside? That's the main point, to make it easy for you to understand what's going on inside. That was the second video I wanted to show. This one is the last one. And this is our Jenkins environment in Salando. We use mainly Jenkins files to build pipelines. And it's the same thing. You see all the files you see there? They are the same ones you were seeing on the, on the file system. We archive them. And you can use this HTML, HTML plugin to visualize the, the, the files over there. Um, so this dashboard that you're seeing right now in Jenkins, is it 
is the same one as if you were just seeing it locally. So this was a job that executed a couple of tests only using Selenium. And this is a job that executed a couple of tests that were using Soslabs. It's transparent for you. It doesn't matter which provider you use, if it's Selenium or a cloud provider, you will see everything in one place. Um, since I already said that we are around 120 teams in tech, so everyone has found a way to use Selenium uh, that fits to their, to their process. So, for example, if you're a tester, if you want to develop a test, you don't want to have the browser like jumping to your face the whole time, no? So you just spin Selenium, you have a grid there, you just run your test, see if it's working or not, and you can also interact with the test when you open VNC in the interactive way, or you can check the video afterwards. It works in that way. Um, for example, a few teams, they prefer to run their tests always when there is a pull request. And they just put it there, they run their tests, and based on that, it's, it's an extra check in their pull request. Um, there are also people using Selenium outside Salando. I know a couple of guys who have huge machines, big servers in Amazon or locally uh, with 100 gigabytes of RAM, and they decided to use Selenium as their like, permanent grid. So I don't know how often they stop it and restart it, but what they do is like they start it in the morning, people use it, when they go home, they stop it, and that's it. You can also use it like that. And depending when you, when you're releasing, depending on your use case, if your users we have teams in Salando that, for them, it, it only matters that their application runs in, in Chrome and Firefox because most of their customers are internal customers. So when they do that, they just use Selenium, and that's it. They don't need anything else. But there are other teams who are in charge of the shop, the fashion front end, and they need to test because we have a bigger um, group of users with different browsers. And what they do is that they start Selenium, they send the capabilities, and some of them run in Selenium, some of the other ones run in Soslabs. And um, this project has only a bit more than six months, so for me, uh, it's quite young. So it's quite relevant that we have gotten some nice numbers so far. Uh, we have gotten more than 7,000 pulls in Docker. I think this is a good number for such a young project. I know that uh, the official Docker Selenium has more than 1 million and many other ones, but in my concept, I feel really proud when many people are using this right now and they are pulling it constantly from Docker. We have more than 380 users around the, the world in more than 30 countries. And we know this because we took the time to put Google Analytics inside the container to identify where, the, where Selenium is being used, but also to identify which features are being used. For example, um, when we create the Docker image, inside we put different versions of Docker because there are sometimes issues I know that Docker should work in the same way in all the platforms, but sometimes it works in one way in Mac, in one way in Linux, and if using Windows, then it's a total different history. So we put different versions of Docker inside the image that you can use when you start it. And that's what we do. We see in Google Analytics which versions are being used. So we decide, okay, like people are not using so much version 11.1, so we just throw it out. Also, we use it to determine how many people were using Selenium 2, and Selenium 3, because around three or four weeks ago, we had two images, two release images, one supporting Selenium 2 and one supporting Selenium 3. And this was quite a mess because we had to have um, two branches in our GitHub repository, merge the feature when it was implemented in one side and then to the other one. And thanks to these uh, numbers that we were getting from Google Analytics, we saw that 
there was a moment where users were getting a bit even, like the people who were using Selenium 2 and Selenium 3. And then we decided, OK, that's enough. We're going to support only Selenium 3 right now. And this makes things easier for you. And you can make decisions based on the data, not just like, I don't want to support two different branches. So I recommend to you when you are developing something that could be used in open source, if you want to get more data, uh, this is a good idea to put Google Analytics inside. It's very simple to implement. And I was checking this morning Google Analytics, and we also have a, a value that tracks the number of tests that are being executed. We started tracking Selenium uh, from the 1st of December last year, and the number until now. So we have executed 53,000 tests uh, in, in, in Selenium. So this means that the people around the world, they have used this, and they have executed over this number of tests. And as I said, this is an open source project. Uh, so far, we have 140 GitHub stars which I think it's, it's a decent number, again, for a quite young project. And we have six contributors. Uh, three of them are people working in Salando, and the other three are people who saw the opportunity to contribute even with, either with code or with documentation. So I invite you to go to our repository, check it. If something is not clear, send a pull request for documentation, or if you see something that in the Java code that doesn't make sense at all, you can create a pull request. We are very open for that. Salando is a, an organization that embraces open source a lot. So if you want to contribute to this project or to any other project we have over there, you are welcome to do that. And if you want more information, of course, you can ask us. We're going to be late later uh, in the next events. Uh, the beer, beer craft and so on. And, but if you want more information, you can go to our um, GitHub repository, browse through it. There are many other issues that people have created, and we have answered the questions. If um, you, uh, I mean, you can go to our GitHub repository and check more things. If you go to just GitHub slash Salando, there are many more things that are interesting. We have other open source projects that may help you with other things that you didn't know that something already created was there for you. And uh, if you are now interested about Salando, you can go to tech.salando.com. There are many blog posts. There are things, uh, articles that show the things we do over there. And of course, there are open positions if you want to explore the German culture. And at the end, um, I discovered that sometimes people are a bit shy in the open source world. They don't feel like posting an issue. They don't feel like writing something in GitHub because maybe they will feel like, OK, what I posted was something stupid. So we have also created an extra channel for this. It's a Gitter chat room where you can go and ask questions. And we will uh, greet you and help you in a very friendly way. And yeah, before finishing and jumping to the questions, I want to publicly like thank Leo, because before doing this project, I have never done anything that is open source. So I think he guided me a bit on how this thing works. He has done open source for many years, and it has been like a great help for me. And also, I want to uh, thank the, the people in the open source group in, in Salando, who also guided us a bit in the way how the legal licenses should look like, so people could use it, and et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, we want to really, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank the, the organizers in, of the conference. We have, they have treated us like really, really well. And we are happy to be here. And we can answer any questions from now. Thanks, guys. That was a nice gesture. Um, any questions? There's quite a few. Right, you go first. Hi, um, I saw a plugin for uh, SaaS Labs. How about Brother Stack and uh, Perfecto? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. I'm sorry. In the Selenium grid, uh, I saw the uh, plugin for the uh, SaaS Labs. But how about the Brother Stack and uh, Perfecto? Brother Stack and Perfecto. Brother Stack, sorry, what? And Perfecto. Perfecto. Uh, yeah, 
we have added the, the existing uh, plugins that we have because we we wanted to check other providers. Like we have already source labs, we wanted to check if browser stack is a fit for us. So we, we developed this. And testing both, they sent a pull request to us. So we are really open to whoever wants to add something else to, to our, our tool, it's free to do it. Uh, like right now for us, uh, the, the ones you mentioned are not like a priority for us, that's why we have not added them. Um, yes, yeah, so I had a question. I noticed that there didn't seem to be any way of managing log aggregation between all the nodes under test. Is that something that you have addressed or do you have a third party tool that takes care of that? What did you mean by node aggregation? The log no. aggregation. Ah, log aggregation. Yes. This is the next feature. This is the next feature because when you go to the dashboard in source labs, you have all the logs there. It's very nice to identify where something went wrong. Uh, but then we, we plan to do the same thing, like download the logs from source labs and copy the logs from Docker Selenium to, to, to the dashboard. That's, that's the next thing we want to do. Uh, first of all, I would like to say a very nice product. Thank you. Um, I'm a little concerned about the inclusion of Google Analytics by default. Yeah, by the, it's by default because we feel that it's valuable information for us. But when you go, uh, when you have some time, you can check our, uh, our usage examples. There is a way to disable it. You can pass a flag and we will not track anything. Of course, we, there is a setting in Google Analytics that it's a flag like anonymize something. We put it there, of course. We don't want, we, we're happy that many people use it, but we don't want to track who, who you are or something like that. It's mainly to get feedback and understand how we can improve it. Um, how often do you fork the official Selenium uh, the, the Where are you? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, how often do you fork the official Selenium grid? The Docker Selenium? The official Selenium. How often do you get updates from the official? Ah, uh, the when Selenium releases, if we, yeah. Yeah. no, we we use the jar as it is. Okay. We extend from it, and and we were thinking if we should maybe uh, build our own Selenium jar, but uh, I think so far we we didn't need to do that. We have been okay with that. Any more questions? Oh, okay. Yeah. Are there any plans to integrate um, support for AWS or other cloud providers to do auto scaling, for example? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. We want to do that because right now the limitation to run the, so to have the amount of parallel Docker Selenium, Selenium nodes. It's only based on um, the amount of uh, like the hardware you have. So it's, it's like a vertical limitation. We want to scale horizontally. Uh, the plan in Salando is to start using Kubernetes. So we want to jump into that. We want to find a way um, to use uh, Selenium with Kubernetes. But we have to rethink some things because we hard-coded something somewhere. And uh, we need to find a way to... <laughs> to remove it. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested in knowing if there's an integration point with Sauce Labs and their tunneling. When you use the one line script and you export your Sauce Labs credentials, the tunnel is enabled by default. So the tunnel is included there. You can also do it Docker run, et cetera, et cetera and start source apps without a tunnel. And it's, it's, it's very configurable, yes. Any more questions? Oh, I have five minutes left. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, over the, yeah. Any plans to support the Docker Swarm? The Docker oh. Swarm? Um, no, um, because at Zalando, we are moving to Kubernetes. We're going to focus on that. Yeah. yeah, they're kind of incompatible. But if someone wants to, to take over, you can, you can send a pull request or, yeah. I mean, as it is, it could be, it could be extended. So yeah. 
it's quite configurable so far. Yeah. Someone over there. Uh, hi, yeah, I was curious about, um, from a performance standpoint, like the cost of, you know, spinning up a node and tearing it down between every single test versus just having the nodes available to run and shell off. Or do you see a lot of, I mean, how does it compare to performance-wise? Um, there is a guy in Brazil who was very interested about this topic. He ran some performance tests. And I don't know exactly the details, but he was satisfied with it. And to be more concrete, right now, the performance of the creation of the nodes in the background is just limited by the amount of memory that you have in, in, in the machine that you're running to. It's not, it's not really hurtful because when we start a new container, it takes nothing, like less than 10 seconds to have it up there. And yeah, there is a mix between if you want to run your test right away, and if you want to run them right away, you could also configure the amount of containers that you will have when you start the tool. You could say, I want to have 20 containers right away. So you could run your test right away, and then in the background more will be spinned as more tests arrive. That's one option. But we need, we need to do something like that. We need to uh, show how if it performs well or not, or if it's better suited for other situations. You're right. And I can also add, uh, you can disable the video recording with a command line. Yeah, yeah, yeah some people do that because it, it's CPU expensive. Mm. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you have any questions regarding with the official Docker Selenium, uh, we have Daniel Davison sitting right at the back. Dan, with your hands. Yeah, so you can yeah. get on to him for your questions on the official Docker Selenium. With that, we are closing. I think there was one last question. We have two more. Yeah, okay. you have? Um, do you capture screenshots? So the question is if we could capture screenshots. So far, no. But we want to do it. We want to start thinking about when to capture them, not for every single comment that is received but maybe when the comment says click or something like that, but we also want to do that. Uh, we were just like clearing out for the, the, the basic features we wanted to have, like video, like the dashboard, uh, something simple to use, and that is giving value to people. Okay. Yep. Uh, are you able to configure whether or not there's a recording per test? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can pass in your capabilities as well if you want to record video for this test or not. You can also pass in your capabilities things like the screen, resol the screen resolution, um, the timeout for idle tests, like if your test is just sleeping for 90 seconds, it gets shut down. All, there are things that, are, that we have learned from, the, from, from source labs and browsers like the way they handle things, and we have tried to copy them a bit. <laughs> yeah. All right, cheers. Thanks, guys. For Thank you. It was wonderful. Nice having you. Thank you.